Hello everyone and welcome once again to Let's Play Morrowind. Last time when we left off we were exploring the city of Ebonheart. We were in the outer courtyard of the castle and we had arrived at the Six Fishes, a tavern. So let's explore around. First up we've got Jocelyn. The first guy was just a generic guard. Greetings, Citizen Travis. I'm Jocelyn. Can I help you? This your first visit to Ebonheart? Is there some specific place you seek? Background. I am Jocelyn, Bard. Alright, that's it for her. Pretty basic. Nothing important in the hutch. Let's chat with Chenil Lee. Grace of the Nine, Citizen Travis, I'm Channel Lee. Welcome to Ebonheart, capital of Ardenfell District. Are you looking for someone in particular? Background. I am Channel Lee, sorcerer and journeyman of the Mages Guild. Latest rumors. One hears whispers in Ebonheart of the Lord's Mail that it has disappeared. The best armor in all of Tamriel it is. Little advice, buy a spell of every type that you can find. This will give you the best options later when you're creating your own custom spells. Lord's Mail. Taken from the Imperial Commission here, right? You're a friend, so if I were you, I'd talk to Rufinus there. He keeps his ears open. Interesting. Okay. Let's try these two sacks. And let's chat with... Well, let's search behind the counter first, just so it's done. And then we'll chat with... <gasps> then we'll chat with Agning. There is one single gold piece in this cupboard that I would like to get. Just for thoroughness sake, if nothing else. Alright. Now let's talk with Agning. Good day, I'm Agning, publican of the Six Fishes here in Ebonheart. We rent beds and I have a limited selection of goods for barter. If you're new here, I can also tell you where to look for other services or a specific place nearby. If you're looking for someone in particular, I may be able to help. Alrighty. All right. <clears throat> Background. I am Agning, pu publican. No need for a bed. Latest rumors. Have you heard of the Chrysomir? It's a sword of legend and held by the Legion in Ebonheart. Hmm. Alright, let's go upstairs first and talk with Venus Licinius.
Greetings, Citizen Travis. I'm Venice Licinius. Can I help you? Is this your first visit to Ebonheart? Is there some specific place you seek? Background. I'm Venice Licinius, Pilgrim and Trooper of the Imperial Legion. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Latest rumors. Have you heard of the Talos cult? A secret group within the Legion. What's that about? Are they planning something? Oh, we got a new one. Forts. We have garrisons at Fort Pelagiad in Pelagiad, Fort Hawkmoth in Ebonheart, Fort Moonmoth outside Balmora, Fort Buckmoth outside Aldrune, and Fort Darius in Nissus. Cool. Hmm. All right. Now, as we look around up here, what else do we find? Not really anything in here. In the next room, we find Lessinia Massilius. Welcome, Layman Travis. Can I tell you about our services? Or, if you can donate more time and effort, would you like to become a lay servant? Background. I am Licinia Massilius, agent and adept of the Imperial Cult. Join the Imperial Cult. You are already a member of the Imperial Cult, Layman Travis. Let's look around in here. Not expecting to find anything here, but I suppose you never do know. Alright, let's try this last door. This one's locked. We'll need to get it open. Oh. The guard has decided now is a good time to patrol up here. Because of course he has. Looks like I only have the one Apprentice's lockpick left anyway. I shouldn't need to reset anything. Alright, that's it for up here. So let's check the basement and then we'll be done. Excellent. Out and down and down. No people. There's some more containers to check. As soon as we're done, which shouldn't take very long, we'll be done with the six fishes and we'll head to the missions in the outer wall next. All looks good to me. All right, that's it for the six fishes. Well, let's head out and let's visit the Argonian mission.
All right. Here's Rabina. Hope of escape. Rabina will be safe here. She will stay here. Yes. All right. Let's actually look around. That's a copy of the Cantatas of Vivek. Let's speak to Ukawe. Greetings, Citizen Travis. I'm Ukawe. Can I help you? This your first visit to Ebonheart? Is there some specific place you seek? Background. I am Ukawe, healer and <laughs> and twin lamps of the twin lamps. Nice. That's it for him. Now let's spring open this small chest. Get the gold inside. Let's head over here and let's chat with Imkilaya. I'm fine, thank you. What can I do for you? Rabina, she is in good hands now. Thank you, Travis. And Solstheim. And that's it. Fair enough. All right, who's next? Gil La. Greetings, Citizen Travis. I'm Gil La. Can I help you? Is your first visit to Ebonheart? Is there some specific place you seek? Background. I am Gil La, monk and twin lamps of the twin lamps. I don't think that was programmed correctly. Little secret. <clears throat> that bookseller in the foreign quarter, Jobasha, is an avowed abolitionist, but so far he has managed to avoid being caught. There's an ordinator in there all the time, keeping an eye on his activities, so he must be very discreet. All right, that's it for him, and let's chat with Onasha. Grace of the Nine, Citizen Travis, I'm Onasha. Welcome to Ebonheart, capital of Ardenfell District. Are you looking for someone in particular? Background, I am Onasha, agent and twin lamps of the twin lamps. All right, that's it for her. So let's look at this shelf. There is one chest to loot. It has nothing important inside. So now let's check this door deeper into the mission. In and down and down and down. What do we find? Andy Say. Pleased to meet you, Travis, and welcome to the Imperial Town of Ebonheart. We're always eager for news here. Have you heard the latest rumors? Or would you care to share a little secret? One hears things here and there. Background. I am Andy Say, monk and twin lamps of the twin lamps.
Nothing new from her. And past her. Going even lower. There are two slaughterfish, of all things. And a cell door. On one. Please, I am afraid. Do not tell. I am hiding. Background. I was a slave, but I have escaped. I am hiding here. Please don't tell. Go free. You must find the key to these bracers. Holstein, twin lamps. That's privileged information. I'm sorry. Really? Huh. You do not know? Uh, okay, and then... She just gives us the passcode again. That's it for her. But we have here a new book, The Marksmanship Lesson. Your marksman skill increased to 100. Sure enough. Alright, well we know it's new, so let's read the marksmanship lesson and take it off the book list. The Marksmanship Lesson by Ala Laleth Kelmaril Bryn had very definite opinions on how things should be done. Every slave he bought on the day he bought him or her was soundly whipped in the courtyard for a period of one to three hours, depending on the individual degree of independent spirit. The whip he used, or had his castellan use, was of wet, knotted cloth, which regularly drew blood but very seldom maimed. To his great satisfaction and personal pride, few slaves ever needed to be whipped more than once. The memory of their first day and the sight and sound of every subsequent slave's first day stayed with them throughout their lives. When Bryn brought, bought his first Bosmer slave, he ordered his castellan to whip him for only for an hour. The creature, which Bryn had named Dob, seemed so much more delicate than the Argonians and Khajidi and Orcs, who made up the bulk of his slaves. Dob was, Dob was clearly ill-suited for work in the mines or in the fields, but he seemed presentable enough for domestic service. Dob did his work quietly and tolerably well. Bryn occasionally had to correct him by refusing him food, but the punishment never needed to go further. Whenever guests arrived at the plantation, the sight of the exotic and elegant addition to Bryn's household staff always impressed them. Here you, said Genetha Illoch, a minor but still noble member of the house in Doril, as Dob presented her with a glass of wine. Were you born a slave? No, Sidura, but Dob answered with a bow. I used to rob nice ladies like you on the road. The company all laughed with delight. But Kelmeril Bryn checked with the slave trader from whom he had bought Dob, and found that the story was true. The Bosmer had been a highwayman, though not one of any great notoriety, before he had been caught and sold into slavery as punishment. It seemed so extraordinary that a quiet fellow like Dob, like Dob, who always looked respectfully downward at the sight of his superiors, could have been a criminal. Bryn made up his mind to question him about it. You must have used some sort of weapon when you were robbing all those pilgrims and merchants, Bryn grinned as he watched Dob mop. Yes, Sidura, Dob replied humbly. A bow. Of course, you Bosmeri are supposed to be very handy with those. Bryn thought a moment and then asked, A bit of a marksman, were you? Dob nodded humbly. You will tutor my son Wadilik in archery, the master said after another moment's pause. Wadilik was twelve years of age and had been rather sadly spoiled by his mother, Bryn's late wife. The boy was useless at swordplay, fearful of being cut. He embarrassed his father's pride, but the personality defect seemed ideally suited to the bow. 
Bryn had his castellan purchase a finely wrought bow, several quivers of arrows, and ordered targets to be set up in the wildflower field next to the plantation house. In a few days' time, the lessons began. For the first few days, the master watched Wadilik and Dob to be certain that the slave knew how to teach. He was pleased to see the boy learn the grips and the different stances. Business concerns, however, had to take precedence. Bryn only had time to see to it that the lessons were continuing, but not how well they were progressing. It was a month's time before the issue was re-examined. Bryn and his castellan were reviewing the plantation's earnings and expenses, and they had come to the area of miscellaneous household costs. You might also check to see how many targets in the field need to be repaired. I have already anticipated that, Sidura, said the castellan. They are in pristine condition. How is that possible? Bryn shook his head. I've seen targets fall apart after only a few good shots. There shouldn't be anything left after a month's worth of lessons. There are no holes of any kind in the targets, Sidura. See for yourself. As it happened at that hour, the marksmanship lesson was underway. Bryn walked across the field, watching Dob guide Wadilik's arm as the boy took aim at the sky. The arrow flew up into an arc, over the top of the target, burying itself in the ground. Bryn examined the target and found it to be, as his castellan said, in pristine condition. No arrow had touched it. <clears throat> Master Wadilik, you must pull your right arm down further, Dob was saying, and the follow-through is essential if you expect your arrow to gain any height. Height, Bryn snarled. What about accuracy? Unless he's been secretly racking up a high kill ratio on birds, you haven't taught my son a thing about marksmanship. Dob bowed humbly. Sidora, first Master Bodilic must become comfortable with the weapon before he need worry about accuracy. In Valenwood, we learn by watching the bolt arc at different levels in different winds before we try very hard to strike targets. Bryn's face turned purple with fury. I'm not a fool. I should have known not to trust a slave with my boy's education. The master grabbed Dob and shoved him toward the plantation house. Dob, head down, began the humble, shuffling walk he had learned in his domestic duties. Wodilic, tears streaming down his face, tried to follow. You stay in practice, roared his father. Try aiming at the target itself, not at the sky. You are not coming back into the house until there is one hole in that damned bullseye. The boy tearfully returned to practice while Bryn brought Dob into the courtyard and called for his whip. Dob suddenly broke away and scrambled to hide between some barrels in the center of the yard. Take your punishment, slave. I should have never shown you mercy the day I bought you. Bryn bellowed, bringing the whip down on Dob's exposed back again and again. I have to toughen you up. There will be no more soft jobs as tutor and valet in your future. Wodilik's plaintive yell drifted in from the meadow. I can't. Father, I can't hit it. Master Wodilik, Dob cried back as loud as he could, his voice shaking with pain. Keep your left arm straight and aim slightly east. The wind has changed. Stop confusing my son, Bryn screamed. You'll be in the salt rice fields if I don't beat you to death first, like you deserve. Dob, the boy wailed far away. I still can't hit it. Master Wodilik, take four steps back, aim east, and don't be afraid of the height. Dob tore away from the barrels, hiding under a cart near the wall. Bryn pursued him, raining down blows. The boy's arrow sailed high over the target and kept climbing, reaching a pinnacle at the edge of the plantation house before coming down in a magnificent arc. Bryn tasted the blood before he realized he'd been hit. Gingerly, he raised his hands and felt the arrowhead protruding out of the back of his neck. He looked at Dob crouching under the wagon and thought he saw a thin smile cross the slave's lips. Just for an instant before he died, Bryn saw the face of the rogue highwayman on Dob. Bullseye, Master Wodilik, Dob crowed. Oh, there you go. And that's it for the Argonian mission. So with that... We can head back out. And head next door to the Skyrim mission. Let's do that. Now, who do we have in here? Rearing is first. <laughs> Grace of the Nine, Citizen Travis, I'm Breering. Welcome to Ebonheart, capital of Vardenfell District. Are you looking for someone in particular? Background. I am Breering, barbarian and trooper of the Imperial Legion.
exotic armor types. We got a new uh, topic, Droog. Droog are ancient sea monsters, half human, half octopus in appearance. Droog are hunted for their hides, which are used for making armor, and Droog wax, a tough, waxy substance with modest magical properties scraped from Droog shells. Interesting. Rat. That's a new one. The rat is a hardy, abundant hunter scavenger found on the land surface and in natural and excavated underground environments. Rat meat is tough and greasy with an unpleasant odor and taste. Nonetheless, it is cheap, abundant, and nutritious, and palatable when cooked in a stew and masked by strong spices. That's it for him. Next, let's talk to Iruki Hearth Healer. Greetings, Citizen Travis. I'm Iruki Hearth Healer. Can I help you? Is this your first visit to Ebonheart? Is there some specific place you seek? Abolitionists. I've heard of a secret organization called the Twin Lamps. It helps runaway slaves escape. It's against the law to aid runaway slaves, but I think slavery is wrong, and I can understand why these abolitionists would be willing to break the law. Background. I am Iruki Hearth Healer, barbarian and trooper of the Imperial Legion. Latest rumors. Did you hear? The Lord's mail has been taken. They're trying to keep it quiet, but some heads will roll, you can be sure. That's it for her. So now let's talk with Bedraflod. I don't believe I've seen a high elf with such a grand outfit in some time. Can I help you? Background. I am Bedraflod, savant and trooper of the Imperial Legion. He's got a lot of topics, but so far none of them are new.
All right. Well, there you go. Lots from him. Let's look back here. We got some chests to either unlock and raid or simply raid. There we go. Over here, there's a Cottonberry, which I want. And we got these shelves with basically nothing. There's a copy of, ooh, two books. Let's chat with Ingotkning first. Okay. Good day, Citizen Travis. I'm in Gokning. This is Ebenhart, named for Castle Ebenhart and the Duke of Ebenhart, Duke Vedum Dren, by the grace of our Emperor, the Emperor's representative here in Bardenfeld District. Can I help you? Abolitionists, background. You may call me in Gokning. What I do is my own affair. Hmm, okay. Morrowind lore. The Imperial Legions are the greatest fighting force Tamriel has ever known. In Morrowind they serve as guards, but the garrisons are insurance that the Dunmer will never rise in rebellion against the Empire. Smuggling. Most high-priced smuggling concerns skooma, moon sugar, ebony, dwemer artifacts, exotic Dunmer weapons and armor, and slaves. Alright, that's it for her. We've read A Dance in Fire Chapter 4. I believe the Wolf Queen Book 2 is new. It is. Your hand-to-hand -hand skill increased to 100. So let's read this one and take it off the list. <clears throat> the Wolf Queen, Book 2, by Wagen Jarth, from the pen of the first century third era sage Montokai. 3E82. A year after the wedding of his 14 year old granddaughter, the Princess Potema, to King Mantiarko of the Nordic Kingdom of Solitude, <laughs> the Emperor Uriel Septim II passed on. His son, Pelagius Septim II, was made emperor, and he faced a greatly depleted treasury thanks to his father's poor management. As the new queen of solitude, Potema faced opposition from the old Nordic houses who viewed her as an outsider. Mantiarko had been widowed, and his former queen was loved. She had left him a son, Prince Bathorg, who was two years older than his stepmother and loved her not. But the king loved his queen and suffered with her through miscarriage after miscarriage until her twenty-ninth year when she bore him a son. 3E97. You must do something to help the pain, Potema cried, baring her teeth. The healer Kelmeth immediately thought of a she-wolf in labor, but he put the image from his mind. Her enemies called her the Wolf Queen for certs, but not because of any p physical resemblance. Your Majesty, there is no injury for me to heal. The pain you feel is natural and helpful for the birth. He was going to add more words of consolation, but he had to break off to duck the mirror she flung at him. I'm not a, I'm not a pig-nosed peasant girl, she snarled. I am the Queen of Solitude, daughter of the Emperor. Summon the Daedra. I'll trade the soul of every last subject of mine for a little comfort. 
My lady, said the healer nervously, drawing the curtains and blotting out the cold morning sun, it is not wise to make such offers even in jest. The eyes of oblivion are forever watching for just such a rash interjection. What would you know of oblivion, healer, she growled, but her voice was calmer, quieter, the pain had relaxed. Would you fetch me that mirror I hurled at you? Are you going to throw it again, your majesty, said the healer with a taut smile, obeying her. Very likely, she said, looking at her reflection, and next time I won't miss. But I do look a fright. Is Lord Vakin still waiting for me in the hall? Yes, your majesty. Well, tell him I just need to fix my hair and I'll be with him. And leave us. I'll howl for you when the pain returns. Yes, your majesty. A few minutes later, Lord Vakin was shown into the chamber. He was an enormous bald man whose friends and enemies called Mount Vakin, and when he spoke it was with the low grumble of thunder. The queen was one of the very few people Vakin knew who was not the least bit intimidated by him, and he offered her a smile. "'My queen, how are you feeling?' he asked. "'Damned, but you're looking like Springtide has come to Mount Vakin. I take it from your merry disposition that you've been made war chief.' Only temporarily, while your husband the king investigates whether there is evidence behind the rumors of treason on the part of my predecessor, Lord Thone. If you've planted it as I've instructed, he'll find it, Potema smiled, propping herself up in the bed. Tell me, is Prince Bathorg still in the city? What a question, your highness, laughed the mountain. It's the tournament of stamina today. You know the prince would never miss that. The fellow invents new strategies of self-defense every year to show off during the games. Don't you recall last year when he entered the ring unarmored and after 20 minutes of fending off six bladesmen, left the games without a scratch? He dedicated that bout to his late mother, Queen Amadetha. Yes, I recall. He's no friend to me or you, your highness, but you must give the man his due respect. He moves like lightning. You wouldn't think it of him, but he always seems to use his awkwardness to his advantage, to throw his opponents off. Some say he learned the style from the orcs to the south. They say he learned from them how to anticipate a foe's attack by some sort of supernatural power. There's nothing supernatural about it, said the queen quietly. He gets it from his father. Mantiarco never moved like that, Vakin chuckled. I never said he did, said Potema. Her eyes closed and her teeth gritted together. The pain's returning. You must fetch the healer, but first, I must ask you one other thing. Has the new summer palace construction begun? I think so, your highness. Do not think, she cried, gripping the sheets, biting her lips so a stream of blood dripped down her chin. Do! Make certain that the construction begins at once, today. Your future, my future, and the future of this child depend on it. Go! Four hours later, King Mantiarco entered the room to see his son. His queen smiled weakly as he gave her a kiss on the forehead. When she handed him the child, a tear ran down his face. Another one quickly followed, and then another. My lord, she said fondly, I know you're sentimental. But really, it's not only the child, though he is beautiful, with all the fair features of his mother. Mantiarco turned to his wife, sadly, his aged features twisted in agony. My dear wife, there is trouble at the palace. In truth, this birth is the only thing that keeps this day from being the darkest in my reign. What is it, something at the tournament? Potema pulled herself up in bed. Something with Bathorg? No, it isn't the tournament, but it does relate to Bathorg. I shouldn't worry you at a time like this. You need your rest. My husband, tell me. I wanted to surprise you with a gift after the birth of our child, so I had the old summer palace completely renovated. It's a beautiful place, or at least it was. I thought you might like it. Truth to tell, it was Lord Vakin's idea. It used to be Amadetha's favorite place. Bitterness crept into the king's voice. Now I've learned why. What have you learned? asked Potema quietly. Amadetha deceived me there with my trusted war chief, Lord Thone. There were letters between them, the most perverse things you've ever read, and that's not the worst of it. No. The dates on the letters correspond with the time of Bathorg's birth. The boy I raised and loved as a son, Mantiarco's voice choked up with emotion. He was Thone's child, not mine. My darling, said Potema, almost feeling sorry for the old man. She wrapped her arms around his neck as he heaved his sobs down on her and their child. Henceforth, he said quietly, Bathorg is no longer my heir. He will be banished from the kingdom. This child you have borne me today will grow to rule solitude. And perhaps more, said Potema. He is the emperor's grandson as well. We will name him Mantiarco II. My darling, I would love that, said Potema, kissing the king's tear-streaked face. But may I suggest Uriel, after my grandfather the emperor, who brought us together in marriage? King Mantiarco smiled at his wife and nodded his head. There was a knock at the door. My liege, said Mount Vakin, his highness, <coughs> excuse me, 
His Highness Prince Bathorg has finished the tournament and awaits you to present his award. He has successfully withstood attacks by nine archers and the giant scorpion we brought in from Hammerfell. The crowd is roaring his name. They are calling him the man who cannot be hit. I will see him, said King Mantiarco sadly, and left the chamber. Oh, he can be hit all right, said Potema wearily, but it does take some doing. All right, let's head into the next room where there's almost nothing going on, just one more guy to talk to, Hydemir. Good day, Citizen Travis. I'm Hydemere. This is Ebenhart, named for Castle Ebenhart and the Duke of Ebenhart, Duke Vedim Dren, by the grace of our Emperor, the Emperor's representative here in Bardenfell District. Can I help you? Background. I am Hydemere, noble and knight bachelor of the Imperial Legion. That's it for him, and by extension, that's it for the Skyrim mission. Let's head out of this little spot, and let's now head to the Hawkmoth Legion Garrison, the only unexplored bit on in this complex. And we've got some cells. Goody. Joshur. Joshur wrote a stupid poem, and now Joshur is in bad trouble. <laughs> Background. Joshua follows the trade of Bard. Khajiit loves sweets, especially the moon sugar. <laughs> That seems to be it for him. Before we go upstairs, let's open another cell door where we can speak with Alodi Jess. What are you doing down here? Alright. 
background. I am a Lodi Jess, warrior and knight bachelor of the Imperial Legion. That seems to be it for him. We got two more cells, first of all. At least that I can see. Noring, are you a prisoner? What are you in for? Background. I am Noring, warrior and trooper of the Imperial Legion. Morrowin lore, a secret cult called the Sixth House is killing Imperial citizens. That's it for him. We do have one other cell. Let's get it open if we can. All that's in here is an empty chest. We head over here. Raw glass, useless armor. Raw glass, useless weapons. Nothing good on the table. Over here is a chest marked evidence. And here is Cirola Sacchus. I want his repair tools. I'm guessing he sells those arrows. Let's talk to him. Welcome, Citizen Travis. I'm Cirola Sackis, and this is Ebenhart. If you're new here, you'll be wanting to ask about our many services for travelers, and I imagine you wouldn't mind a little advice. Yeah, he restocks all those arrows, so we'll leave him be. Uh, one note about Cirola Sackis. Oh, it looks like maybe it was fixed. He's the master trainer for Armorer. Very good. Background. I am Cirola Sackis, smith and champion of the Imperial Legion. <clears throat> Latest rumors. I've heard there's a shrine to Sheagorath hit it. Sheagorath hidden in Vivek. Some claim to have spoken to the Daedra Prince, but they must be madmen. At least they are now. Right. That's it for him.
Note that there's a Hawkmoth prison cell key there. Not that we need it. Now we can head upstairs. Uh, down or up? Uh, let's go down first to this little barracks. <clears throat> We've got four more people to talk to here. Let's get started. Inside this barracks we have Nebia Anthea. Greetings, Citizen Travis. I'm Nebia Anthea. Can I help you? This is your first visit to Ebonheart. Is there some specific place you seek? She's got spells. I want them. Let's see what the spells actually are. Weary, Strong Levitate. Wearying Touch. Strength Leech. Shock Bloom. Lightning Bolt. Commanding Touch. Absorb Personality. Absorb Strength, Absorb Willpower, Orc Strength, and Rapid Regenerate. Cool. Oh, background, I am Nebia Anthea, priest and agent of the Imperial Legion. loot these chests. I'm going to have to switch to a journeyman's pick, I think, which, to be clear, is fine by me. Potions. Don't care. Empty chest. That's fine. Check under the pillows. Let's talk to Fenildil. Pleased to meet you, Travis, and welcome to the Imperial Town of Ebonheart. We're always eager for news here. Have you heard the latest rumors, or would you care to share a little secret? One hears things here and there. He also has spells we need. Let's get him to 90 plus, and let's buy him. What does he have? What does he have? A lad's caligony. Invisibility. Dire noise. Iron will. Great resist frost. Great resist magicka. And shadow weave. 
Cool. Let's buy those, and then let's do his dialogue. Background. I am Fenildil, healer and trooper of the Imperial Legion. All right. Let's head to the next pair of beds. Check under the pillows. Check the chests. I need to unlock this one, and I need to make sure to use the journeyman's lockpick I already started working on. There we go. Nothing in there. Let's try the pillows on the last bed and the last chest. I inadvertently picked up a pillow, which of course I don't want. Last chest is empty. Now let's head over here. Oh, looks like I miscounted. There's only three people to talk to. Let's talk to Omzi. Welcome, Citizen Travis. I'm Omzi, and this is Ebenhart. If you're new here, you'll be wanting to ask about our many services for travelers, and I imagine you wouldn't mind a little advice. Background. I am Omzi, Master at Arms and Champion of the Imperial Legion. That's about it for her. That was easy. Let me check. I could have sworn I saw a fourth person, but maybe I hallucinated. I certainly didn't. Irvona Barris. Pleased to meet you, Travis, and welcome to the Imperial Town of Ebenhard. We're always eager for news here. Have you heard the latest rumors, or would you care to share a little secret? One hears things here and there. I knew I didn't hallucinate that fourth person. Faction members only, High Elf. Alright, so I need to make a note of her. We need to be a member of the Imperial Legion to buy spells from this one. Let's just do dialogue then. Background. I am Irvona Barris, Battle Mage and Knight Bachelor of the Imperial Legion. <laughs> Latest rumors. Lately, the Ordinators have been taking verbal shots at the Legion Guards. The Legion Brass has got a muzzle on the troops, but they don't like it one bit.
All right. Well, that's it for her. We've still got more of the Hawkmoth garrison to explore. Specifically the top floor right here. But I've been going an hour and I am just about out of time. So I need to end this installment here. This has been Let's Play Morrowind. Next time we'll continue, we'll finish exploring the Hawkmoth Legion garrison, starting off by chatting with Frald the White. And when we're done, we'll cross the bridge and head to the Grand Council Chambers. Until then, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please consider clicking an ad, liking, sharing, or subscribing, any or all of which will really help me out. But regardless, please know that I really do appreciate the time you spend watching, and hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.